All right, today I'd like to look at some British coins. These are crowns. Now, a crown was uh, five shillings. So it's a quarter of a pound. So that was 20 shillings to a pound. And these were five shillings, so a quarter of a pound called a, a crown. They were in silver. They started with uh, Oliver Cromwell in uh, 16... 58, but these are extremely rare, so I haven't got any of those. This one is a Charles II. Carl Los Lufts the second, so it's all in Latin. And on the other side, we've got the arms. And then we've got over here. 1662 Great Britain and Ireland Hibernia King so got the arms of Scotland Ireland and England so this is 25 pence in modern currency where there are 100 pennies to the pound so, but this was five shillings. Now these came up to Elizabeth II, but during her reign, it was mainly just to celebrate. They weren't in general circulation. They were just celebrating things like anniversaries, jubilees and that sort of thing. But during this period, up to Elizabeth II, they were real coins in circulation, but they were not minted every year. This one is of William the Third. Again, his, his name in Latin. They're all the same size and same sort of weight, and they're all in sterling silver. Again, it looks very similar to the last one. What you got on here? Sixteen ninety six. Or William the third. Some of them, like James the second, again are extremely um, expensive. So those I haven't got in my collection, but I've got a number of the different heads. And here we've got George the third. These aren't too expensive. They, he produced quite a lot of these during the Industrial Revolution. Money was getting more available. People had money in their pockets. And so they produced more coinage. But again, it wasn't every year. There was only certain years they produced these coins. So you got George III. And this is 18, 19. So it's produced during the Napoleonic War period. He's got his head in a, like a Roman emperor. And we start getting the George and the Dragon symbol. And this went up all the way up into the modern day. They started this George and the Slaying the Dragon. And sometimes they have the date and some inscriptions on the side. Sometimes it has uh, the date in Latin numerals. This one we've got, it looks very similar, but this is his son, George IV. As you can see, the head changed direction from one king to the other. So you had George III facing right, and then you had his son, the next successor, facing the other way. So let's go on that one. So we've got George the Fourth, and this is the part where we get the Regency period. He did the. He was not a light king. He was a bit of a womanizer, a bit of a drunk. 
But again, he hasn't got a crown as such. He's got this Roman type laurel headgear. But again, we've got the George and the Dragon, 1821. So very similar coins. And now we've got, I haven't got, the next one would have been William the Fourth, but his coins are very scarce for crowns. So the next one I've got is a Victoria 1844. This is her young look. She had just come to the throne in 1837. So she had this young portrait done. And this one, we've just got the coat of arms. The United Kingdom. This one's going to be a later version, near her end of her reign, 1897. And here we've got the, I think it's the imperial crown on there, that small imperial crown. She was then um, Empress of India. But again, we've got the George and the Dragons come back, 1889. Then we've got Edward the Seventh. Again, this is quite a rare coin because not many were printed, or minted, sorry. 1902. And again, we've got the George and the Dragon motif on that side. He didn't last very long. And then he was succeeded by his son George the Fifth. This one is 1935, so just before the Second World War. Again, this is a very stylized, a very modern take on George and the Dragon. They sometimes call it a rocking horse because it looks like a rocking horse with that dragon being the, the rocking part. 1935. And we've got George VI. So he didn't produce that many. And this one, it's got a coat of arms. And then we have these ones of Queen Elizabeth, 1977. Some of these are of silver, some are base metals. But they're mainly, they're not circulating. They're just sort of advertising certain events. Like this one's a silver jubilee with a queen on the horse. So they become much more like um, Collectors' items rather than there's the portrait of the young queen, 1981. So these were printed mainly just for people's collections. And this one is the royal wedding of Diana and Charles. So these are. Crowns, British crowns from um, 17th century onwards. Shows this continuation 
of items of coinage, uh, their weight, their content, until we get to the modern period when it all goes down because we're not on the gold standard anymore. Currency is no longer uh, of intrinsic value. It's gone to modern um, nickel and stuff like that. And the silver and gold content of higher end coins have now gone. I hope this was of some interest and um, you'll be able to recognize a British coin when you go around uh, antique places. And I'll hope to see you soon. Please hit the subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, it all helps my little channel. Okay, see you soon. Bye.